All right. Okay, put your hand up, children, if you've ever been to a funeral before. Anyone ever been to a funeral? Yeah, quite a few of you. Are funerals, you can put your hands down now, are funerals really happy? No? No, they're sad, aren't they? Why are they sad? Hmm. That's right, because someone's died. Sad when people die, eh? Um, I don't know if you guys if you guys can remember, but we were reading Psalm 116 earlier. Mr. Vosh has read that for us. And in that, it said something that's a little bit strange. It said something a little bit strange. Let me get it and read it for you. It might, because you've just said going to funerals is really sad, right? And it, and it is sad because when people die, it makes us sad. But, you know, God says something quite different. God says in Psalm 116 verse 15, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Now, I'm fairly sure for most of us, when we go to funerals, we don't say to ourselves, well, that's very precious. We might say that about maybe a special toy or maybe a yummy piece of food. Oh, that was precious. But we don't say that about people dying, do we? But God says when, when believers die, it's precious. And today we're going to be hearing about the reason why. The reason why is because Jesus died. And Jesus' death was precious in God's sight because Jesus' death would mean that though we die, we live with him. And that's why when we go to funerals, sometimes it's a bit strange because you'll see people and they've got big smiles on their face. I can remember when my grandfather died, there was more rejoicing than there was crying. And that's because we all knew where he was. And we were really glad for him because he had a really tired old body that was really sore all the time. And we were really glad for him because the Lord was pleased to welcome him home. And, you know, we can have that hope too as believers. And Pastor Ejimar is going to tell us all about how he's going to take us to the cross. He's going to take us to the death of Jesus and show us why all of our hope is found there. And that's true for you guys, and it's true for me, and it's true for your mums and dads, and for all of the people in this room, and it's a hope for every single person in the whole world. So let's pray and thank God for the death of Jesus. Father in heaven, we thank you that Jesus has died and lives forevermore, and that in him we too can die and live. And we pray Father, would you help us to believe that? Help these children to believe that, that we too might have eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello. I love our, uh, our pastor, Logan, because he can preach my sermon in three words to the children. <laughs> Praise the Lord for this. <laughs> Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, may, may be grace and peace uh, with you in this morning. It's precious for me to be here again. <laughs> and we have a commitment. Uh, if I, I, uh, I use uh, a bad uh, pronunciation here, please, after this worship, you can correct me. Because it's important, important for me, for my process, uh, learning this language, uh, to, to have this correction, okay? Our commitment. Okay, I would like to invite you uh, uh, to open your Bible in Matthew chapter 27, verse 45 to uh, 54. Matthew chapter 27, verse 45 to 54. The text tells us the death of Jesus. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth uh, hour. And about the ninth hour, uh, Jesus, or the ninth 
ninth hour, Jesus uh, cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, that is my God, God, my God, uh, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders, hearing it, said, This man is calling El El Elijah and Elijah. And one of them at once ran, ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put in it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let, let us see whether uh, Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded, yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain uh, of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth ch shook, and the, shook, and the rocks were split. Uh, the tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming up uh, of the tombs after, after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion uh, and those who were with him, keeping watch over uh, Jesus, Uh, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with uh, awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, uh, we are before your presence again, and uh, it is a good time, a precious time. Father, you are our God. And uh, our desire in this morning is to listen your voice. We need this. We need this for our lives because your voice is powerful and uh, can change our hearts every day. Uh, please, Father, give us to receive your message from your heart to our heart, Father. Uh, thank you for this precious opportunity. Help me. And help everyone here to understand uh, this reflection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, brothers and sisters, I would like to start this sermon uh, with this question. Why is the world so resistant to the message of the cross? Why is the world so resistant to the message of the cross? This terrible expression of pain, suffering, and abandonment is full of love, surrender, and sacrifice for those whom he loves. The world mocks, mocks at what happened on the cross, while it is gently invited to experience the liberating, transforming, and comforting power that results from what happened on it in different places around the world uh, this mockery mockery turns into hatred often ending in persecution and death of those who preach this message those who just want others to experience as they they do the love of god may they receive the joy peace and hope from the power of the work done on the cross. Every, uh, every year in Brazil, there is a four-day four festival known as Carnival. Unfortunately, this is a festival dedicated to the excesses of the flesh. This festival in Brazil is a symbol of sensuality, exposure of uh, naked, naked bodies, free sex, drunkenness, and drugs. The saddest thing about this celebration is that every year they delight in preparing something to mock Jesus in the event on the cross. But these mockeries don't, don't just happen today. 
An example of this is the Alexamenos uh, graffito. Uh, it is a piece of Roman graffito scratched in plaster on the wall of a room near the Palatine Hill in Roma, in Rome, uh, Italy, dated between the first and second centuries after Christ. In this image, Jesus is crucified, but the head of the Jesus represented is that uh, of a donkey. Did you know this? A donkey. There is no doubt, doubt that these types of mockery have been happening since the days of the apostle. Why does this happen? Why does this happen? Because Christianity is unique. Christianity is unique. When we talk about Christianity, we must understand that we are talking about biblical Christianity established in the Holy Scriptures. It is important to understand that many expressions of Christianity are false because they are not faithful to uh, Scripture. In the days of the apostles, they had to confront uh, some false expressions of Christianity. Look with me this text, Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. Paul tells us, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Verse 7 uh, not that there is another one, but there are some, some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preached to you, let him be, be accursed. There is no other expression of spirituality like biblical Christianity, brothers and sisters. In all other expressions of spirituality, man needs to strive for salvation. The language used is be good and do what, he, uh, do what is good. This is the only way to save your soul. But biblical Christianity is different because it is realistic. The gospel tells, uh, tells us in Romans chapter 3, verse 10 to 12, None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. All have turned aside, together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one on. There is nothing we can do to deserve be, to be saved and to be accepted in the presence of God. No matter how much we try to do something to deserve salvation, we do much more to not uh, deserve it. And even... What we do to try to deserve it, we do it from wrong and selfish motives. We would do it because we fear hell and want to be free from it, not because we love God and want to glorify Him. For this reason, we need Jesus. For this reason, we need Jesus Christ. Only through him we can receive salvation, acceptance, and eternal life. Only through Jesus. But why is it only through Jesus? I invite you to look together at the crucifixion, uh, crucifixion of Jesus and see some things that reveal, reveal with uh, why it is only through Jesus. The first point is in the, the verses 45 to 49. Because only he can save us for 
God because only He can save us for God. At this point, I would like to start with this question. Who are we? Who are we? When we look at each other, we would say we are good people, right? Right or no? Maybe because we are friendly with each other. Maybe because we have never killed or robbed, robbed someone. We always pay our bills, make our contribution to society, and so on. Under these standards, uh, we could even be considered good. But what about our hearts? What about what we do in the privacy of our solitude? What about what we say when no one can hear us? Or even worse, what about the terrible thoughts that run through our minds? There is no more, but that surely is enough. Perhaps in the eyes of those who do not know us fully, we can be considered good. But in the eyes of the one who sees all things at all times, we are very far from being considered good. Before the judgment seat of God, the supreme judge of all existence, we are all under reproach and deserve eternal condemnation. That is to live an endless existence under God's righteous wrath. Jesus in, in Matthew chapter 40, uh, 24 verse 51 describes this reality as that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Scary, isn't, uh, isn't it? Scary. And God, as the righteous judge, cannot fail to, to punish the transgression of the law. The penalty needs to be applied. Just as obedience to the law uh, guarantees eternal life in the same proportion, transgression of the law must be punished with eternal condemnation. But the same God who needs to fulfill justice also decided to manifest his love. Love cannot ignore justice. Love cannot ignore justice. For this reason, God in his love established, established a substitute to receive condemnation in our place. And this substitute... Uh, is Jesus. The Bible tells us that he voluntarily accepted to be our substitute. In him, God loved us, fulfilling the justice required by the law to save us. Let us look at the text and see how this justice was fulfilled. Jesus had been arrested early that day. Reading the previous verses, we see that he was betrayed, abandoned, spat upon, punched, slapped, bound, mocked, beaten, and terrible scourged. After much torture, torture, uh, in a state of agony, uh, he still had to carry his cross and was then crucified. All this he suffered and endured in silence. From uh, 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. that day, there was darkness throughout the land. In those last hours, the Son of God suffered in the flesh the pains caused by our sins and the rest of creation 
manifested itself in lament, withdrawing into the darkness of anguish experienced by its creator himself. There has never been and never will be a darker moment than this in all of existence. God himself, God himself now incarnates suffering such an outrage as this. Outrage as this. But there, around three o'clock in the afternoon, out of breath and without strength, Jesus screams, Eli, Eli, Lema Sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What was that? Some believed that Jesus was calling for Eli Elijah help, Elijah's help. Perhaps because they did not understand the language in which Jesus expressed himself. But something else was going, going on. After about uh, 13 hours without any verbalization of the uh, agonizing suffering he was experiencing, now suddenly he screams. What was going on with Jesus? What was going on with Jesus? While he was suffering in his body, body and enduring this in silence, there was another suffering that penetrated the soul of Jesus to depths of it that caused him to scream. The Father even though he loved the son infinitely, had to pour out on him all the wrath that our sins deserve. And what our uh, sins deserve is hell. All eternity under the wrath of God. Jesus was receiving upon him all the intensity of eternity in weeping and gnashing of teeth in one moment. And more, it was not only the condemnation of one of us, but of all those for whom he died, uh, paled up at once. My condemnation, your condemnation, his condemnation, her condemnation, all about him. This was a suffering that no one else in all of existence can or will be able to comprehend. R.C. Sproul tells us this is even more agonizing for one whose relationship with the Father is perfect in love. Surely you know the movie Passion of the Christ by Mel Gibson. This move was so intense and unexpected that people fainted in theaters. Even if we read, we read the biblical description of the event, our minds could not measure the violence of Christ's suffering. Some people said it was an exager exaggeration because there was so much torture and blood. Really? Really? The Bible tells us that the blood of Jesus was shed for us and not dripped. Isaiah Isaiah. Centuries earlier, uh, had prof prophesied uh, that Jesus would, would be disfigured. Disfigured. Isaiah chapter five, uh, 52, verse 14. As many were astonished at you, 
His appearance was so marred. So marred. According to historical archaeological date, da uh, data, the movie was very accurate in expressing Jesus' physical suffering. But what Mel Gibson failed to represent in that move, movie was what is far beyond the reach of the eyes. The sun so being crushed by the righteous wrath of the Father that needed to be applied for our salvation. It was this, rather than all of the physical agony and the shedding of his blood that caused the beloved son to cry out, Eli, Eli, Lema, Lema Sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Imagine, unable, uh, imagine this. If the physical suffering was so terrible that we are unable to measure it, what would the suffering on the sun's soul have been like? Can you understand now why in Gethsemane, the beloved Son of God, sweating drops of blood in deep agony, prayed, saying, My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And why all this? It was out of love of us. Because God wants us with him. God wants us in his presence. God wants us as his children. All this because of love. Let's now see what happens next. Do you remember our initial question? Why only through Jesus? Why only through Jesus? Verse 50 to 51, the first part, the answer is because only through him are we accepted by God. It was his work that opened access to the Father's presence. In verse 50, Jesus cried out once more and died. Matthew doesn't tell us what Jesus' last cry was, but most scholars agree that he was saying what is in John chapter 19, verse 30. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bound, bound um, his head and gave up his spirit. It is finished. There, uh, these were the last words of Jesus. This is the translation of a single word in Greek. Did you know? Do you know? Tetelestai. Tetelestai. It was usually used in local businesses in Jesus' day to declare that a payment had been made. A negotiation had been consummated. With this word, Jesus was declaring that the work had been done. The price for our sins had been paid. There is no longer a debt to God's justice. Justice has been served. There is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Hell, pay attention in this point, hell no longer needs to be feared if you are in Jesus Christ. Reconciliation is guaranteed because the way into God's presence has been opened. Because of what he suffered, Jesus became the only bridge to God. To no one else can we attribute 
the title of mediator between God and man. Men, only to Jesus, because it was he who suffered condemnation in our place. Paul tells us in 1 Timothy, Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 to 6, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. After having lived through this terrible moment, Jesus became the new and living way to the presence of the Father. And this became ev evident with the event uh, that took place after Jesus' death. Let's look at the text together. And behold... The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Matthew 27, verse 51. This event has great significance for what was happening. Until the work of Christ, the temple in Jerusalem represented the presence of God among his people. The temple was divided into three spaces. The inner court, the holy place, and the most holy place. The most holy place represent uh, the most holy place represented the dwelling place of God. It was separated from the holy place by a large curtain. The holy place was where the priests served by offering sacrifice daily. This curtain that separated these two places represented the untouchability of God's holiness. According to Flavius Josephus, a first century historian, uh, this curtain was uh, 17 meters high and 12 centimeters thick. Only the high priest, priest could enter the most holy place once a year on the Day of Atonement to have an, an encounter with the presence of God. For this, the high priest needed to be specially prepared so that he would not be killed in the presence of God's holiness. On that day when Jesus was on the cross, the priests were serving in the holy place. While the priests were performing the services that day, at three o'clock in the afternoon, that curtain, by a supernatural act, was torn from top to bottom, just as Jesus died. Imagine the despair of those priests, priests as they saw the curtain being torn in the most holy place exposed to their eyes. But what for them was a terrifying event for God's loved ones, those for whom Christ died, it was a liberating event. Why? Because God was signaling that the way into his presence was open through the work done, done by his son. Through this work, Jesus became the new and living way of access to God. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 to 21 tells us, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter to holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God. Who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Without Jesus, it's impossible for us to reach God or enter his presence. Because of what Christ has done for us. We now have free access to God's presence and can draw near 
to Him anytime and anywhere. If we are in Christ, we will always be accepted into the presence of our God because the righteousness that guarantees us this is fulfilled in Jesus. But our God does not want us to be with Him only on this earth. God's plan in His Son is to grant us this fellowship with Him for all eternity. For this also God, for this also God sent His Son. Let's see what else the text tells us to answer our question. Why only through Jesus? Verse 51, second part to 53, we have a answer. Because only He can give us eternal life with God. Eternal life with God. He was able to overcome death so that we may live eternally. Many think that life on this earth ends with our death. But this is not true. Physical death is a reality, but the word of the Lord tells us that we will continue to exist because it is not the end of our journey. Death did not exist before sin. It came as a consequence of sin. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. However, the tragic effect of physical death is only temporary. We were created to continue to exist forever, and so it will be. But as a consequence of sin, physical death must be overcome for the victory wound on the cross to be complete. Again, quoting uh, Paul, he tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. By dying on the cross, Jesus paid for our sins and opened the way for us to the presence of the Father. But a third thing, a uh, th uh, third thing, also happened. Uh, 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 also happened. Sorry, from the second part of verse fifty-one to verse fifty-three, we see that when Jesus took his last breath, there was an earthquake that resulted in the breaking of rocks and also the opening of tombs, according to the text. Many bodies of saints, servants of God, who were did, uh, dead, were resurrected. And when Jesus was resurrected, they entered the sit city uh, of Jerusalem and appeared to many as a sign and testimony of the resurrection, showing that the work of Christ was perfect. The resurrection in the crown is Sorry, the resurrection is the crown of Christ's work. Without it, the work is not complete. Without uh, this, uh, the resurrection, the work is not complete. Do you remember that before taking his last breath, Jesus said, Tetelestai? What does this mean? The price has been paid. Justice has been fulfilled. The work has been completed. How can we be sure that God really accepted the work of the Son? How can we be sure that sin has been totally conquered? The answer is the resurrection. The resurrection. It, is, uh, it is God's declaration that all is truly done. Without the resurrection, we would have no guarantee that sin has really been conquered to the end. Paul 
also tells us this in 1 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 to 13, and verse 17. Paul tells this. But if there is not no, but if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith, faith is in vain. And verse 17, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is future, futile, and you are still in your sins. Can you understand this? The resurrection of these people together with Christ was a sign from God that Christ had perfectly fulfilled the work and death can no longer exercise power over, over the Lord's beloved. The Bible doesn't tell us who these resurrected people were or what happened to them after they appeared as a testimony in Jerusalem. We know that they were servants of the Lord because the text tells us that they were saints. But any further, further statement, then this would be mere speculation. My beloved brothers and sisters, this work is glorious. This work is glorious. We may be saddened in death, but we are consoled in the hope of the resurrection. We may die and return to dust, but this perishable body will come back from the dead and be glorified, closed in imperishability because of the work of Christ carried out on the cross of Calvary. Our bodies will not remain in the grave, but will be taken up and be reunited with our souls to live eternally with our God for His glory. For this Jesus died for us. Without Jesus, we would be lost. Without Jesus, we would be lost. In conclusion, why does the world resistance to this, this message? Jesus answers this with these words. John chapter 3, verse 19, 19 uh, to uh, 20. And this is the judgment. The light has come has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. If Jesus had to suffer in our place, it's because we are insufficient. insufficient. If his suffering was so terrible because of our sins, it's because our weakness, weak, weakness goes beyond what we can imagine. And this is something that is difficult to admit. This is something that is difficult to admit. We don't want to be exposed for who we really are. But the greatness of this work, work reveals how loved we are by the Lord. In spite of ourselves, God through His Son has loved us in such a way that we can be sure we won't perish, 
but we'll live eternally with him. We need only believe in Christ, in what he's has, he has done for us, and surrender our lives to him. And if you who are here today have not yet received Jesus, perhaps this message is a call from God to your heart. Turn to Jesus. Recognize that you are a sinner and surrender to Jesus. If you are in Christ, you don't need to fear hell because Jesus suffered it in your place so that you can now have heaven through him. If you are in Christ, Pray as much as you can, because now your prayer will be accepted. Worship because now your worship will be accepted. And wait because he will come back to pick us up so that we may be all saints before him, him for all eternity. Finalizing. Finishing, seeing the things that happened with Christ's death, the centurion said, truly this was the Son of God. But he was wrong. Why? Jesus was not the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God because he is alive, because he is sitting on the throne and reigns. And one day he will return once again for you, for me, for the people, the uh, holy people on the earth. The people that recognize and surrender before who he is, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. Praise the Lord. God bless us with this message. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you one more time. Because we don't need to fear the hell. Because Jesus Christ lived this reality in our place. He suffered in our place, our condemnation. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Because we don't have that in our presence, Father. Thank you because Jesus Christ opened a way until your presence, to your presence, Father. He is this new and living way uh, before your presence. Thank you, Father, because now when we pray, you listen, you hear our voice and receive our prayer because through Jesus Christ, we are acceptance before accepted before your presence, Father. Thank you, thank you. Thank you because we can die, but in Jesus Christ, we will rise up in Jesus with a new body, um, close with um, glorified. Father, uh, glor uh, Father, thank you for this, Father, because the death, uh, the dead cannot uh, to take us because Jesus Christ took us in his hand and we are with him for all eternity. Thank you, Father, for this precious message. Give to uh, that um, this opportunity uh, to receive your message when they maybe uh, now cannot understand this message father thank you thank you thank you give us your holy spirit 
through this time of uh, worship, through this mes message. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.